Once I was foolish and sin ruled my heart, causing my footsteps from God to depart. Then Jesus found me, happy my case, I now am a sinner, saved by grace. Only a sinner, saved by grace. Only a sinner, saved by grace. This is my story, to God be the glory. I'm only a sinner, saved by grace. Not have I gotten, but what I received. Grace hath bestowed it since I have believed. Boasting excluded, pride I abase. I'm only a sinner, saved by grace. Only a sinner, saved by grace. Only a sinner, saved by grace. This is her story, to God be the glory. I'm only a sinner, saved by grace. Clara Sue Jeffress was the daughter of the late Jesse Jeffress III and Edith Clara Bullock Jeffress and stepmother Jean Love. She was the sister of the late Reverend Jesse Harold Jeffress her great nephew, Jordan Wubinaw, also preceded her in death. She is survived by a loving sister in law, Janice L. McLucas, two nieces, Jewel A. D. Fioris, and husband Chris, and Jeannie M. Strawell, and husband Chad, and two nephews, Jesse M. Jeffress, and wife Kelly, and Joel W. Jeffress, and wife Brenda. Twelve great nieces and nephews and a great-great-niece and a nephew. Clara received her Bachelor's of Science in Nursing from Covenant College, Lookout Mountain, Tennessee, and her Diploma in Nursing from Chester County Hospital School of Nursing, Westchester, PA, in 1971. She graduated from Frontier Nursing Service School of Midwifery and Family Nursing in 1976. She became certified as a family nurse practitioner, nurse practitioner, and a nurse midwife. In 1977 through 1986, she worked with the Red Sea Mission Team, now Reach Across, in northern Yemen and Sudan. Then she returned to Leslie County, Kentucky, and worked with the Cutchin Bible Church and Creek Incorporated until 2013. 2014, she moved to Interlochen, Florida, and was employed by Dr. J. Matheny in his office and at the Palatka Healthcare Center. She became a member of the Elian Baptist Church in Melrose, Florida. She accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior at a young age and dedicated her life to his service as a teenager. A quote from Betty Stan is in front of her Bible. Lord, I give up all my own plans and purposes, all my desires and hopes, and accept thy will for my life. I give myself, my life, my all, utterly to thee, to be thine forever. Fill me with thy Holy Spirit. Use me as thou wilt. Send me where thou wilt. Work out thy whole will in my life at any cost, now and forever. She retired in 2019 and moved to Lakeland, Florida to be near her family. In 2009, she was diagnosed and treated for breast cancer. In 2018, the cancer progressed to become metastatic breast cancer. She continued treatment, but in spite of the treatment, the cancer grew and spread. She entered Heaven's Gates November 14, 2022, at 8.45 in the morning.
who nagged her about her grades, and Jean Love Jeffers, who turned out to be her stepmother. I guess Grandpa noticed Jean Love and took care of business. Anyway, Aunt Clara said that her death made her grow up in a way. Death is real, and one has to do things to keep life going. Aunt Clara also wrote some poems that she gave me, and I didn't know she was a poet. See what you get when you ask questions. You find out lots of cool stuff. This was something really special. Faith is holding on tight when the going gets windy. Well, if you don't know Aunt Clara, she, um, for instance, went to Sudan to serve as a frontier missionary without a visa. That was windy going. And um, she did a lot of things, you know, with prayer. God was by her. He was definitely directing her. This is her poem. So, you do what is recommended. Hmm. Healing is what is expected. But those cancer cells keep growing in the dark and damp places, glowing. Foggy brain, collapsed lung, low energy. This is hard to do. What's a person to do? So... You know that there is more than meets the eye. God is sovereign and holds and guides you with sigh. But why is he not healing? What is up his sleeve? My part is to trust and believe. He gives peace. He gives grace, laugh, love, and learn. He may even allow my life to give glory to him. He gives strength on the up days and down days and faith to hang in there when the going gets windy. I disagree with my aunt's poem when she says, he may even allow my life to give glory to him. That's absolutely not true. Aunt Clara's life gave glory to God. scripture was in depth and she's one of those people would would have been great to the meet when she was much younger uh, that, that's a pleasant smile she put had an honorary smile uh, when, when I would misspeak teaching or say something backwards she loved that uh, she always had something to say to uh, straighten you out uh, in, a, in a kind way, joking way, but uh, thankful for that. But the family found a video of Clara as a junior, senior in college, as she was working as a intern midwife in the hills of Kentucky. And that's what this five-minute video is. The digital clarity is not what we're used to today because it was 1975, but you get, you'll recognize her. I'm a student nurse midwife in the Kentucky mountains. I came to Kentucky because I like the rural area. Sometimes when you go on a home visit, the people aren't home or they have moved away. Then we have, we have to go, go and find them. them. We, we almost, almost always track them down. I worked in a hospital before where I thought I wasn't giving the best care to my patient because I didn't have time to talk to them. Here at Frontier Nursing Service, I felt I had more time to spend with my patient. Have we been out for a home visit yet, too? No, we haven't. Okay. And probably the next time you should come out and visit your house. 
You got a two-story house? Do you live in the second story? No. Oh, both of them. You live in both? Yeah. First, do you have to walk up the stairs? Not that much. Oh, okay. Is it up a big hill? No. No? Okay. I'm just wondering how much walking up the, up the hills you have to do. <laughs> well, I don't want to walk up hills, but... There's more of a family atmosphere here as far as the family is a very important structured part of the community. And I decided to go into the family nurse practitioner course and on into midwifery because I could give primary care to the family unit. And as I got into the midwifery angle, I found even more interest in it because you, you get down to a, um, a one-to-one relationship with the person. And, um, there's a lot of teaching you can do with a person. So I really, from, I think from my desire to really talk with the patient and be able to have more of a relationship with the patient than roll over and have a shot to give you. I use the word teaching and it includes prenatal care, the physical things that we do for the mother, as well as teaching the mother how to care for herself and care for her baby that, you know, is coming. Yeah. We try to emphasize the teaching so that the patient has something more than just a baby. She has a knowledge with which to care for that baby and to care for herself. to teach the patient and wants the patient to have knowledge to take care of herself, to take care of the newborn and to produce a, a happy family when, when the nine months is up. This is Lily Tapley with her new daughter April and this is the father Francis Tapley. During the, time, the period of time before the baby was born, uh, we made visits to the nurses over here, the frontier nursing home, for her examinations and her uh, care. They were very nice. They were wonderful. They, we, we've never been any place where they treated us any better. They gave us the best of care. Uh, I, I followed 10 of their children in different places. I've uh, never had anybody treat us like the frontier and some of the And uh, I just couldn't recommend them high enough. Uh, there's no other place that I've ever been or have we had a baby or anything that they treated us and, and towards us and took the fingers they took in this child and in the line. For further information, call 606-672-2317 or write Frontier Nursing Service, Wendover, Kentucky. We stand, we stand together, together and sing, Great is thy faithfulness and praise to you, God.
you may be seated. In her order of service, she said she wanted a gospel presentation. To sum that, it's very clear what is expected. To others, it seems in our day and age that there's all kinds of definitions of the gospel out there. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians 15 tonight. And as we said several months ago, I sat down with Clara to talk about her funeral service. And she was adamant that she wanted the gospel presentation. So why the gospel? Well, because at some point in her life, as we heard earlier, she heard the gospel and she put her faith in Jesus Christ. Clara then proceeded to live her life committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ as she served him. And it's this that gave her hope, gave her peace, and gave her comfort, even as she was being devastated by cancer in her lungs. So as we look at 1 Corinthians 15, Paul begins here and he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word, which I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. We see the gospel product. And the gospel product is salvation. It produces salvation in those who believe. When I say it produces salvation, some would say, well, what am I saved from? I'm content on this earth where we're saved from our sin. See, God created the earth. God created man. And it was perfect. Man then rebelled against God, sinned, violating his law. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, simplified, the basic definition of the gospel is the good news. But let's look at the complete definition here in this chapter. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 says, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And then he goes on and talks about being seen by Peter and the Twelve and over 500 people at once. And then James and the other apostles. See, the gospel here defined, the gift is the gospel defined here. And it's not original with Paul because he says it was given to me. Paul was adamantly against those who proclaimed the gospel. He was against Jesus Christ and anything to do with him. And that's what makes the reality of the resurrection of Christ, which we're going to see in this chapter, uh, a fact. That somebody who stood firm against Jesus Christ would turn and would become an adamant follower proclaimer of the good news of the risen Christ and salvation by faith. His life was totally changed. But verse 3, is you see the definition, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He died on the cross to pay the penalty of sin. This was prophesied all the way back in Genesis chapter 3 when it was told that the woman, the seed of the woman, the seed of Eve, would crush the serpent's head. And then it was revealed later by, the, by Isaiah in Isaiah 53, as 700 years before Jesus was born. He said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Even the prophecies of Psalm 22, a thousand years before Jesus, tell of his suffering. It says, many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They gave at me with their mouths like a raging and roaring lion. I'm poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It's melted with me. My strength is dried up, dried up like a potsherd. My tongue clings to my jaws. You've brought me to the dust of death. For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. 
they pierce my hands and feet. I can count on my bones, they look and stare at me, they divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. You see, though Jesus died an excruciating death to pay the penalty of sin, the gospel definition, the gospel message doesn't stop there. Because in verse 4 it says that he was buried, that's proof of his death, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Had Jesus stayed in the grave like all other religious leaders and all other men, he would be just like those famous men or religious leaders. He would be a dead man. Yet Jesus rose again. And that resurrection was also prophesied back in Psalm 16, 9. It says, Therefore my heart is glad, my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor you will allow the Holy One to see corruption. Jesus rose from the dead as was prophesied. And it's Jesus' resurrection that gives us a hope and certainty of our resurrection for all those who put their faith in Jesus Christ. We watched as Clara calmly knew she was dying over the last years and especially months. And yet there was complete peace. She was not anxious. She was not in distress over it. She was uncomfortable. The cancer was uncomfortable for her. She'd get that too. You'd ask her how she was doing it. She'd say, oh, just wonderful. You've seldom heard anything more than that. But it's this hope of eternal, eternal life and hope of resurrection that allowed this. And see, when we use the word hope, the hope in, in the scriptures is not like the hope of a kid getting a big gift on Christmas morning. Hope in the scriptures is a guaranteed promise of God that will come true. We have to understand the way Paul is using that word hope. So we have the gospel um, Defined, we have the gospel product of salvation. We have the gospel eternally. In verses 50 to 57 of 1 Corinthians 15, it says, Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, the trump will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible is put on incorruption, this mortal is put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, we look forward to the transformation from our broken down bodies to our new bodies in the resurrection. For some, like Clara, you'll face death. For others, we're going to see that immediate transformation with the rapture of the church as we're called to be with Christ. But this is the final victory to have our perfect, glorified bodies which are distinctly ours, yet not identical to the flesh, but which we now live in. Remember, though, that this promise is for those who have acknowledged, who have acknowledged their sin, put their faith in Jesus Christ's death to pay the penalty of their sin, and acknowledge him as Lord because of his resurrection. And I ask you, have you put your faith in him? That's a question Clara wanted to ask tonight. Have you put your faith in him? If you have not, or you're not, not sure what I'm talking about, let one of us speak to you afterward. Let one of us share with you more about it. But the chapter doesn't end there either. As we've seen the, the gospel, uh, what it accomplishes, we've seen the definition, we've seen the gospel for eternity. We also have the gospel daily in verse 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. For those who trust in Christ as Savior, Paul gives final instructions on how to live our lives. Instructions I believe Clara fulfilled in the time that I knew her and for much of her life, from all the testimony we've heard. 
The idea of being steadfast is being consistent and firm. Immovable is unshaken or steady. And always abounding in the work of the Lord is actively served, focused on who Christ is and what he's done for us. Why? Because we have that promise. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And I think that's what you mentioned as you read that poem. She asked that question. Well, the promise is that when we're honoring him, it is a, a truth. See, when we put our faith in Christ, we're motivated to serve him faithfully, no matter what the cost. So this evening, have you put your faith in Christ? Clara's desire would be that you know her Savior. And if you trust in Christ, are you serving the Lord? Are you committed to using the time, your talents, your abilities to his honor and glory? This next song is a song on video that she wanted us to play. It's called All My Tears Are Washed Away.
on, on the, the back, back of your flyer here is a poem that Clara wrote. Just going to read that. First responder saves a drowning girl. Divers try to save a group of boys. Rescuers are touted as heroes on the news. My rescuer, my hero, gave his life for me. Yet I've never seen him face to face. What will it be like to see him and thank him? Heaven, me with the glorified body so long, aches and pains. All the surroundings will be bright and beautiful. What words I will I be able to say? How about a hug? Then to see my family and friends who are there, it's been a long time. Really, no more tears. How about tears of joy and happiness? Happiness in his presence. Learning and understanding his love for me. Then giving that love back to him forever. This sounds like heaven to me. Hallelujah. Appreciate each, each of you coming, coming today to encourage the family to rejoice in what God did in Clara's life, knew how he used her. I'm, I'm going to close in prayer, and you're welcome to fellowship together. Father, we thank you for the salvation in Jesus Christ. If there's any here that don't understand what it means to have that relationship with you, we pray that they would stick around, that we'd have a chance to talk with them and share more truth from your word. We pray that you will help those who put their faith in you to be challenged by Clara's faithfulness to you. That we too might be faithful and continue to be steadfast and immovable in our service for you. That you might receive the glory of our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.